Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of my Victorian Mansion build. In this episode I'm going to be doing some more work in the entry. But the main event of this video is going to be building this beautiful door. And I've taken this door from a absolutely beautiful South Australian mansion in Adelaide Hills called the Ockendorick House. So this is where I'm up to at the moment with the door and I'll be continuing in the over the next couple of weeks. And for those people that don't remember, this is where the entry is now. That's why. So first job in the entry here is to clean up all the liquid nails that has uh, come out from the joints. And that's easy enough to just chisel off. So once I got the liquid nails out, I was able to start plastering up the joints. Now I did start putting some uh, flushing tape in there and realized that it really it's really not necessary because if I get a small crack along the joint it's not going to matter because it'll actually just enhance the wood grain effect of it being panelled out with pieces of wood. So yeah I did that and then I came along and uh, undercoated with my white undercoat and I'm just going around the edges there because that's the only bit you're going to see once the rest of the uh, panelling, the panel in the middle and the, um, the moulding goes on. So the, doing a little bit more wood graining here so I'm just masking off my joint so that I can get a nice crisp joint, crisp joint sorry, in the pieces up there and uh, running my wood grain tool along. For some reason I've had a little bit of the paint peel off but I can easily add that back in before I put my toner on. So this here is a, just to remind you, is a picture of what the house will look like at the front once I get rid of those shop windows. And before I get into the main event, look, we have some grass to mow. I can't believe how quick this seed has taken off and if I didn't mow it now, it was going to be a jungle. So yeah, we, uh, we haven't even got a mower, I had to borrow the mower off of, mower off of mum and um, give it a quick mow and then I'll drop it back. So I'm going to have to get a mower pretty soon. But yeah, happy with this lawn. Once it spreads and fills in those spots that it's a bit bare, it's going to be really nice out there. So I couldn't get my whipper snipper started. I didn't show you the footage of me ripping on that ripcord. So another little job that I got onto next was planting my tree that I bought back when I got the other trees and um, it's been sitting there waiting for a weekend after a good rain. Um, yeah, uh, as it turns out it hadn't rained very much and I had to put some water in the hole but yeah, so I dug the hole and then I got some cow manure and some potting mix and mixed them together and put that in there. Got my tree so it's looking good and then laid it up with the potting mix the cow manure and the original dirt and then just went several layers and this is how I was told to plant it for best results so who am I to come up with my own way I don't know anything about planting trees so I just follow the instructions and can't go wrong so I got plenty of mulch on top keep it moist and give it a good water in and by the looks of it, I'm puffing there for some reason. <laughs> so that's all done. Now on to the main event of building the door. So first up, I needed three different size uh, patterns out of this MDF. So one was for the top of the door. Uh, another one was for the bulk of the uh, door frame and then the third bit was a slightly thinner bit uh, for where the door closes in. So you've got your your frame and then I guess you've got your door stop. It's all built into one. So I just set up my jig, routed them off. And uh, then I was able to uh, start looking at pulling the timber out. So I just had to as I was going along just double check all these sizes because I can't move the brickwork on the house so 
it was a matter of just doing it, just double checking. If I needed to adjust that slightly, I could adjust it and swing another radius around. So yeah, just calculating the exact size because you've got to take into account the thickness of the cutter for the inside and the outside cuts which is a 10 mil cutter it's pretty easy to work out but nothing ever works out millimeter perfect because when, when you drill the hole and then when you screw it and you can be a mill out quite easily so you'll see shortly the uh, three different pieces you get a bit of waste when you're doing this but it's the best way to do it that way I can lay out the whole thing, I can check it and know that it's going to work before I get all the expensive timber out. So still checking things and adjusting things, just making sure I get this right. I just had to recut this one, I think that's, oh this is the last piece. So I didn't worry about having an absolute full size piece for this uh, internal piece of the frame. And I'm just checking it there, yep I've got a 3mm gap. And then I've got the other frame that sits over it so you've got your door stop all sorted. And then I'll run around there with a the seal so that we don't get wind blowing through and it should be perfect. So this is the timber I've got. So this is the, the same timber that I've used on the um, rest of the doors and the door frame. So it's the hoop pine and it's made out of short lengths. So it's nice and straight, stays stable and doesn't you don't get bowing and cupping and stuff like that that you would get with a solid piece of timber so just cutting all my pieces to size and then I can go on to the next stage so I always allow a bit extra when doing this because nothing's worse than coming back or you, you cut a piece you know say a meter long and then you go damn it, it no, I need a meter and twenty and then you got to throw it, or not throw that piece, but you got to put that aside and then that might be too short for the next bit you get. So you're much better off just cut the timber a bit longer and give yourself some wiggle room. So run them through the thickness of now. So this came at 50mm thick and I'm going to machine it down to 48 Nice thick front door. So although this is sped up, this feels like how fast I work when I'm doing this. It's, uh, it's a machine that you can, if you dawdle, you, it can take you a long time. If you work fast, you can get it done real quick. So, you know, I, I'm not getting paid for making this, so I've got to get it done quick. And I've got work to do, so I can't take forever to make this door. So just flipping it over and doing the other side now. And that's, like I said, finishing at 48 mil thick. Now, just for people uh, that don't have the metric system, uh, so 48 mil is just under two inches, so it's a nice thick door. So cutting my strips now, cutting them down to the finished size, in width that is, of course. So now I've got to glue the the big rails, uh, two pieces thick. So I'm just running the biscuit machine through that to join them together, and that keeps it nice and flush. So biscuit that up, glue them up. A lot of these jobs are quick. When you're building one door, you can really get this done quickly. And the glue dries so quick, this glue is really strong and it dries super quick. I could leave that in the clamp for an hour and then I could pull it out. So I just put it in my uh, top rack 
and clamping it up and I'll leave that for a while. So now I'm just working out the angle that I need to cut all my pieces. So this is going to be made up of I think about seven pieces to get that curve because it's 130mm um, wide and the timber only comes at 150 so I'm just doing a test bit here just to out of some MDF just to check and see how it's going to work so I figured all that out and uh, can use one of them as a pattern now to cut all my little bits and once this glue dries it'll be as good as being a solid piece of timber one thing I have full confidence on this glue it's called type on type bond ultimate or type on three and uh, yeah it's very strong glue so I've put some dominoes in there and I'll whack it all together with some glue and I put a few staples in there as well just to hold it because you can't really clamp a curve So it's a bit of a pain really. I like to clamp things up nice and tight, but these dominoes, as you can see, they're a good size. They're 100mm by 12mm thick and 25mm wide. So I haven't seen one of them break yet. And once they're glued in there, you cannot get them out. Or well, if you even knock them in without glue, you can't get them out. Just checking it, make sure that I can get my 130 mil out, and that's all working good. So I'm just throwing a few staples in there, and once that's sanded, I can paint over that, and you won't see anything. Might have to putty up some fine gaps, or well, the paint will probably fill that anyway. So yeah, you won't see all these joins by the time I'm done. So there we go. Make sure it's all good. It's a hard thing to do on a curve to make sure everything fits perfectly. So the next piece now, this is the um, the wider piece of the door frame. So I'm just uh, interlocking these pieces to save a bit of timber and get the maximum length out. So a bit of thinking time by the looks of it. <laughs> I'm going to measure how many I need. When you're making these things, it's you got to really keep your wits about you and keep thinking. Just when you do one bit, you think about what how it's going to work with for the next stage. And once you've decided, you know what you're doing, uh, you don't have to think. Then you can just do. So just cutting these pieces out now on the bandsaw. Now I, I, there's a lot of pieces here. There was. Uh, I think I had 12 pieces all up so I didn't I'm not showing you all 12 pieces that's gonna be pretty boring so I'll just show you basically cutting out one of these planks of curved bits and I'm being super careful and accurate here so that I can just have about two mil to trim off and that's just going to make easier work for the router and make it so that there's less chance of any little chatter marks being ripped out. It is quite a thick piece of timber being like I said 48mm thick so you don't want to be taking too much off with the router or it'll be just hard going it'll take you a long time. I prefer to keep it under 3mm when I'm cutting these shapes and that way you can route it without any problems. So while we're just watching the rest of this, if you don't mind guys, do you want to just hit that like button? That would be awesome. And uh, 
If you like what I'm doing here, let me know what you think about this door at the end of the video. If you think this is going to look good or anything else, like a bit of feedback would be awesome. So now this is the um, thinner piece. Actually, I might have got it around the other way. It's hard to tell when you um, when you're watching it back. But anyway, they're all done now. So now I've got my 12 pieces, and now I need to write, route them off of the pattern. So certain pieces you can just plow it through. You got to read the grain. You got to be looking at the grain, and you got to each piece of um, timber is going to react differently to the router. So you can see I'm not going very fast, but this is sped up. I'm actually going quite slow, so I can get this just as accurate as possible and have a better finish at the end of the day. So I'm just nibbling away on that part of the grain because it's uh, I'm cutting into the grain, which could sp uh, split off a quite a big chunk if you're not careful about it. So it's just a matter of working through all your bits. I found a little rough spot on the jig so I'm just sanding the sanding that smooth. It was just a little spot where I must have stopped the router and moved and, and started again so just if your jig's right your pieces that you're routing off of it are going to be right. I hadn't noticed that earlier so just taking care of that. I did figure out that it's not really that necessary to run backwards or nibble it that I could actually run through because these pieces, the, the grain is um, it's running straight through on that but it's not a real steep um, angle of the grain so you know you change things the whole time you're working you're adjusting things and it's not one rule for every piece you do but you get a bit of confidence after you do a couple and you know you can imagine how slow that would be in true time just to make sure you know some bits so yeah you got to listen to it as well um, with going slow you can hear it start to split and you can stop and you can come back go backwards with the router so that's what I also did I like to keep my bench clear and just have the tools I'm working on and blow the dust off in between. Some people like to have their tools and dust and screw boxes from other jobs and all sorts of stuff all over the bench whereas I like to keep my bench clear and just have the tools I'm using at the time. So now we're up to doing the top of the door. So I've got my confidence up with the other pieces so pretty much just ploughed through this very slowly and just keeping my my ears tuned in for if I hear any splitting but basically just was, I was able to just run, it, run this straight around. And this is when it gets pretty cool when you see little bits of timber become a perfect curve. It's quite enjoyable doing curved things. Now 
now just checking the frame to see if that's going to all work right and it's and that's how thick the frame will be the three pieces uh, glued together so checking my pattern again just check check and check again got to stay on the ball when you're doing something where you have internal and external curves and they all have to meet up and have the correct gap and that kind of thing so I'm just cutting the angles on these pieces so that they pull together nice and flush and I'm just holding it just lining up the blade and holding it where it needs to be and cutting it you don't have to have it resting against the stop but you want a nice sharp blade and you want to just take it slowly and these joints all came up nice and tight so yeah just take your time and you'll be able to cut it easily like that I just got one spot resting against the stop so it's just a matter of working so that uh, I was making it like a a brick sort of pattern where you had you go over the join and um, what's the word I'm looking for you, uh, you you just do it like bricks I can't think of the word uh, what I'm trying to think of but anyway so the second layer is going to have two short bits on either side and two long bits in the middle so there just to get the strength so just a couple of staples just to hold that where I want it while the glue goes off I like to spread the glue it's not a hundred percent necessary but I do believe it gives you a better uh, hold with the glue being spread over the whole surface but I have done it both ways now I'm making sure that these pieces are sitting on the pattern perfectly because I know the patterns all fitted together nice so i just got to make sure the timber now because it's easy just to have the timber slowly work its way off but you can adjust it all when it's at this stage so i was happy with that then you can see i've got the next piece going on that uh, is where the um, door then will sit in there up against the door seal so um, yeah that's there we go it's uh, coming together now just checking everything just uh, you know I, 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 in setting this out I just check this so many times because once you glue that on there you're not going to get it apart so I'm just marking a line of where that block will sit it doesn't matter about the outside so I get myself some packers for that door piece to sit on and line that up with the line or in fact line it up three mil off the line for my gap and then the other bit can go should go perfectly along that line now I, I will fess up and say that uh, it didn't fit exactly right so when I put this last piece on I had to just make it uh, not follow along in the perfect curve I had to just pull it out a bit on the ends and that's totally fine to do and that's why you want to stack these up and do it as it's going to be to make sure that when it's done it'll be exactly right 
it doesn't matter about you know the layers on the outside that's all going to be inside the wall so you can see me just checking that that gap is I've got an even three mil gap and it does go from probably about I'll say five but it was probably like four and a half to three mil gap so in the middle of those curves so in other words the curve was a little bit too tight so for whatever reason some movement when I was routing it, whatever it might be, um, it doesn't matter. It's a matter of when you're building them and putting this together that you you make it all work. So, and I did think about sanding those, but you can see the joint, the gap looks even. A lot of the time, it's a bit of just working out what you need to do to make it work because things go wrong, you can't help that. So I'm screwing this all together because this will have the architrave that's going around it and cover up all those screw holes. So when I did this one, I angled that screw so that it would pull it in nice and tight on the joint. And the same on this one. So you can see that gap, you can't tell that it, it goes from 4.5mm to 3mm. And I can sand the top of the door to make it look perfect anyway. By the time you put an arras around there, no one's going to notice that. I'll be the only one that knows. So just uh, checking, uh, marking my spot where I need to cut that off to have it perfectly flat onto the bits where it goes uh, straight at the bottom and there we have it I've cut my all my little uh, rails and stoles so thanks very much for watching don't forget to subscribe if you're not and I'll see you on the next video cheers